Hello friends, this is Adam with Movie Guide 365 and Disney Plus is officially out in the United States. So after a few days, let's talk about things I feel that they could improve on the streaming service. Please hit the like button, subscribe, hit that bell notification. I put out videos every single day. You can also find me over Twitter and Instagram at MovieGuy365, as well as over at the Disney Magic Hour podcast. I will leave a link for that in the description. All right, Disney Plus has been here for several days now in the United States, and I hope everybody's enjoying it. I think it's actually probably a really good launch success. I mean, yeah, a couple hiccups aside, uh, a few people are still having technical issues, but for the most part, it seems to be up and running, full steam. Well, and uh, just a lot of content at launch, and, and they're going to be adding more all the time. But I feel that there are a few things that they can improve upon. Now, look, nothing's going to be perfect out of the gate, and there's just going to be some features that we're all missing that we kind of have a wish list for, and just a couple things to tell, make the overall experience more enjoyable. And I believe a lot of these that I put on my list, I have five uh, here, can be easily fixed, and one, in fact, will actually be fixed, as it has been confirmed, and I will talk about that in just a few moments. But yes, my impressions of the service are that it's really good, it's a, it's an amazing first just launch, and it's it's got a lot to digest. I spent a lot of time this week going over the material, and yeah, just a couple thoughts of what I feel that they can actually improve on. So my first one is going to be aspect ratio adjustments. And what I mean by that is the big one of the big things coming out of the initial launch were, were The Simpsons. And unfortunately, the first 20 seasons or so were formatted in a certain way where it's kind of a box format, so what they call 4 by 3 That's back when TVs were more box-like, so it still filled your screen when you had a, a box TV. Now, now today, pretty much everybody has a widescreen uh, television set or monitor. So when you watch it and, you, and they stretch the aspect ratio, it just completely engulfs the screen. And you lose a lot of uh, picture and what, like, you know, some jokes that were dependent on that format. Uh, one in particular that seems to be going around is the Duff Beer Bat, where it has like Diet, be diet Duff Beer, beer and then extra duff beer and they're all coming through the same pipe so it's basically they just labeled it differently but it's the same beer but unfortunately when you watch it currently on the uh disney plus it that joke is stretched out like you can't even see the the punchline of the joke now back when fx had the simpsons world this was also a problem but they did actually fix that one and we got confirmation let uh, late last night that yes Disney is going to be fixing this issue. It's not just uh, relegated to The Simpsons. There's a couple of their own original content that suffers from this. Some do, some don't. Uh, shows like Darkwing Duck, for instance, are uh, formatted at the correct aspect ratio. But The Simpsons will be fixed. It is going to be early 2020 when they when they get, to, get around to making those changes. But rest assured that is going to get fixed. So I hesitated putting this on the list, but considering there's still a few uh, two to three months before we see any changes, I thought it would be relevant to just add to the list. Uh, my second one is, I feel that for uh, something that's supposed to kind of be an alternative for uh, home theater fans to get all their Disney content in one place, they need to kind of up their game as far as the 4K content goes. Now, I think it does look great. We were given so much 4K content out the gate that it was it was a welcome surprise. The star, the original Star Wars films, all the uh, the prequels, they all received a 4K uh, upgrade with Dolby Vision, HDR, Atmos, and that is such a good thing. I'm I'm very happy we don't have to pay extra for that. But I think they need to up the bitrate just a little bit more. I feel that they're a little bit on par with Netflix, uh, maybe maybe a little bit above Netflix as far as quality goes. By the way, Netflix charges for that that uh, that uh, 4K uh, content. But I feel that they're still below what uh, Apple TV. I think Apple TV, while their their original content is very limited, their uh, their bit rate is higher. So the 4K looks a lot better on the Apple TV. So that means it can be done. And I think Disney should up that game. Uh, give us the best possible out there. You know, it's it really. I think for people like me, and I know there's a lot of people out there, really want the best. You know, you want you want that 4K. You want that Dolby Vision to look its best. And improvements can be made. So I really hope they kind of look at that and make adjustments accordingly. Uh, the third one is more of a, just kind of a, uh, I, I feel that their category breakdowns are really nice, but you still really have to kind of rely on the search function to find what you're looking for. They do have things like animation under the Disney banner and original uh, movies and TV shows, but they don't put all of those 
uh, items in that respective category. More breakdown would be nice. Or, you know, because a friend of mine watched Fantasia the other night, and if you go to Disney Animation and scroll through, it's nowhere to be found. So you have, you have to be able to find these movies that are a little bit more obscure, that are a little bit, you know, not as popular. You really have to go, you know, with the search function, or search bun, uh, button function, sorry, and just kind of really, you know, you have to utilize that a lot more than you probably should. I think more category breakdowns would be nice. Even rotate them uh, from time to time. I think, you know, it, while let's say Moana would be in there, of course, because it's uh, hugely popular, you know, maybe alternate that out with something that's a little less popular. And then the next day, something that would go back to Moana. It, for the people that don't really like to use the search function, you should be able to put more variety in those uh, basic breakdowns. So I think that's something they may address. I know Netflix has done that in the past. So hopefully this will be uh, something that Disney can look into. Uh, this is a big one for, once again, home theater guys like me. Sometimes when we ro we're watching a movie, I think the, the launch is great, the movie is great, we kind of like to watch the credits, you know, or listen to the music, or, you know, it's just nerd stuff that we like to do, you know, go through that. We don't like suggestion pop-outs while we're watching the credits. So once they get through the initial, like, main part of the credits, and then it does the scroll, you get a pop-up. And it breaks, kind of breaks you out of the immersion a little bit. I know it's a little bit nitpicky, but believe it or not, there's a lot of people I talk to, especially in the last couple of days, that don't like this function. And I have to agree with them. I think it, you don't really need a suggestion. You know, you're know, you're in the Disney Plus app. There's a whole bunch of suggestions in the menu. So I think it's kind of redundant. It kind of breaks the the, the mood a little bit for, for people like me that like to watch the credits or listen to the music through the credits, whatever the reason. It's a bit much. I think they can do without it, honestly. Uh, and, the, and the fifth thing, uh, I think the resume and start over functions need a little bit working. Now, the, the, the resume does work on a limited basis, but I feel it kind of works a little too well uh, in the sense that we were watching uh, The Mandalorian over here and we got to the credits. We, we even got to the point where they started doing like, you know, alternate language credits. So uh, I was uh, doing a thread with the Disney Magic Hour podcast and we were going to be watching the first episode of The Mandalorian. So as soon as everybody timed up right, you hit start and all of a sudden I'm back in the foreign language credits. Like there's no start over function. That definitely needs to be addressed. I think we, uh, you know, and the, also the um, the scroll through is not very intuitive. It's uh, depending on your device, I think it's a little more uh, kind of a, a subject there. But I think it really, kind of, they should give you an option. I know there is a resume to an extent, but the start over, I think, really needs to be on this. Uh, and not it's like you watch the credits, and then, you you know, if you're just kind of, like, getting towards the end of the credits, it still doesn't. It needs to be a cutoff point, I think. If you can't do a full start over, do a cutoff point. You know, as soon as the credits start, then as soon as you start over again, it goes back to the beginning. I know a lot of services do this. I don't know why uh, this one is uh, uh, any different. But I think that is something that actually can be fixed. So, those are just some suggestions I feel that Disney Plus can utilize in the future. And I think most of these are very easy fixes. Uh, a couple items on here are more wish list stuff. But I think overall, this can actually be addressed. And I feel it will be addressed in a future updates. So, let me know in the comments below, what do you think Disney Plus can do to make the experience better? What are some changes that you would like to see? Let's talk about it in the comment section. In the meantime, please like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. I'll put out videos every single day. So until next time, this is Adam at Movie Guy 365. I will see you at the movies.